even realizing that people are getting themselves into predicaments that they should. Right there in the rocks, cliff face. It's going to be a touch and go. We're just about ready to package here. Probably got 10 minutes of packaging. I was in a painful situation and to see that many people arrive enthusiastic, attentive, alert, and ready to take action right away was just remarkable and I was quite happy and excited about it. Nelson draws in a lot of people that are really into extreme sports, mountain climbing and backcountry skiing and snowboarding and whitewater. So just the fact that those people tend to draw to this area creates the basis for a really strong search and rescue team. Uh, we probably had about uh, three to four inches of snow that's fallen overnight and we're looking for a very small airplane that could be in some very thick brush. As we were coming up the river, we found quite a bit of debris and all the way along it was an oil slick. The police were on the shore saying that this was the general area that they had found the pilot's helmet and uh, some debris of the helicopter. It really was not a good picture. It had snowed a lot. It was continuing to snow very heavily. It was very cold out. It was very socked in, so the visibility was not good at all. One of our biggest concerns is the avalanche danger. Let's get it done. Search and rescue. This is Nelson Search and Rescue. Can you hear us? It's starting to get dark. We have very little time to get something done. Figures from the beach dock to the dolphin straight out 150 feet so around. We've seen something in the water floating. It looks uh, the right color and shape, so we're going to go right now and check it out. I can't tell we're rocking too much. It looks like it's him. Training is a big part of search and rescue. Most of the training we take has a, a shelf life of about six months. You have to keep doing it year after year after year. A lot of new things come up too, new techniques, new equipment, new people that you need to work with. You know, everyone needs to know everybody's strengths and weaknesses. They have to be comfortable. You have to become a team. You gotta train all the time. It's the most important thing to make a healthy team. The fuselage was extremely damaged and it was obvious the tail rotor was missing too. So that was key to transport to find that tail rotor. So we came back the next day and further down the river actually, we've, we found the tail rotor. So our good results of our, our searching. Sam, we got him. There he is. Guys are doing great. Thank you. How are you doing? We got the easy job. Just FYI, this rotor take us right to where that plane mark is on the Google Earth. Yes, have them move to uh, East Peak for better comms. Team Bravo, Bravo. Broad base. Yeah, you can move to East Peak for better comms. Yeah, more. Team Hotel, the team. Uh, there they are, right there. Copy, we have a visual on you. Over. <laughs> it's not just about technology, methodology. It's about bonding as a team. If you're going to go out and do a rescue call and put your life in someone else's hand, you're not going to do that not knowing their name, not practicing with them, not doing those same rescue techniques together and knowing they're not going to let go of the rope. Everybody ready? 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 Okay, let's go. Almost brought tears to my eyes. I thought, oh man, these guys are going such an extra mile to get me off this mountain. They did a remarkable job and I give my thanks, very hearty thanks to those team members and uh, thank you for volunteering. Normally when you're in a team, someone's going to be assigned one of the perimeter people.